Hi there, I'm David Williams. I'm from the Electronic Engineering Technology Department at Okanagan College. This video describes how to do the AC analysis of a common collector amplifier. So before doing AC analysis on this type of amplifier, let's just take a quick look at the way that this circuit behaves under simply a DC input. Now, this is a common collector amplifier and another name for a common collector amplifier is an emitter follower and let's take a look to see why now I've got this circuit here along with a table to to relate the input voltage to the output voltage let's say we are dialing the input voltage to, to these different levels we, we want to figure out what the output voltage is going to be and really the only thing that we need to take into consideration here is that when this amplifier is on we're going to have a voltage between the base and the emitter that's somewhere around 0.7 volts as, assuming that this is a silicon amplifier or a silicon BJT so looking at the table over here we've got an, our input voltages di various different levels of input voltages let's figure out what the output voltage is going to be well when we have an input voltage of 0 our output voltage is going to be about 0 volts as well when we have an input voltage of 0.5 volts, so this is 0.5 volts applied to the base, well, we are probably going to not have any output voltage either because we haven't supplied sufficient voltage to forward bias that base emitter junction. Now, when we apply 1 volt at the input, we will have about, about 0.7 volt drop between the base and the emitter, so the output voltage measured right at the emitter is going to be about 0.3 volts. 1.5 volts at the input, 0.7 volt drops going to give us 0.8 volts at the output, 2 volts at the input, 1.3 volts at the output, 5 volts at the input, 4.3 at the output, 8 volts at the input, 7.3 volts at the output. Now the thing to pay attention to here is that as long as we have enough voltage to forward bias the base emitter junction, every time we have a step in voltage, we have the, at the input voltage, we have the same amount of step at the output voltage. So 1 to 1 1.5, that's a 0.5 volt step. 0.3 to 0.8, that's also a 0.5 volt step. 5 volts to 8 volts, that's a 3 volt step. 4.3 volts to 7.3 volts, that's also a 3 volt step. So every input step that we have, we will have an equal size output step. So you can imagine that if we apply an AC signal here instead of this, this DC signal that we vary, we are going to end up with an output that follows along to the input voltage. And as a first approximation, this is a very good approximation. For the common collector, otherwise known as the emitter follower amplifier, the output voltage is going to be about the same as the input voltage. That's a good first approximation, but let's take a look at some of the details and see how when we do the more in-depth AC analysis that it's not quite true the output voltage won't be exactly the same as the input voltage. So here's a very generic common collector amplifier. We see our amplifier part is here in between capacitor C1 and C2. We have an input signal coupled into the amplifier through C1 and we have an output signal that's AC coupled through C2 to the amplifier. So we only have the AC portion applied across the RL. Let's look at the DC portion first, the DC part of this particular circuit, to see where this amplifier is biased. And we won't be able to figure out exact values because we don't have exact values for the resistors, but the general idea when we're figuring out the DC characteristics of this amplifier. Uh, we want to figure out the base current and the collector current and the collector emitter voltage and emitter current as well. So in order to do this, this analysis, we need to look at some that the input loop and the output loop. And here at the input loop, this part of the circuit right here, we can figure out the base current using, using the Kirchhoff's voltage law equation for that loop, starting at VCC, subtracting the voltage drop across the base resistor, subtracting the base emitter junction voltage of about 0.7, and then subtracting the voltage drop across the emitter resistor brings us down to our zero volt reference point. And using the fact that IE is equal to beta plus one times IB, 
we can solve this whole, substitute this in to the equation here, and we can solve for the base current. Once you have the base current, then again you can figure out the collector current, or the emitter current, and the collector current. And then when you have that piece of information, then you can use the output loop here, this part of the loop, or this part of the circuit, to figure out what the collector emitter voltage is. And in this case, we don't have a resistor in the collector. So that Kirchhoff's voltage law equation is going to be VCC minus the collector emitter voltage minus the voltage drop across that emitter resistor brings us down to zero volts. Assuming we've done everything correctly here and our resistors actually have values, we will know what the emitter current is, we know what the emitter resistance is, we know what our source voltage is, so we simply have to solve for VCE. And then we have all the DC characteristics for this circuit. The next thing to do is the AC analysis. And one of the steps that we can do as, we're, as part of the AC analysis is to figure out what is the small signal model of this amplifier. And the small signal model is also known as the AC model of this amplifier. So when we're doing the small signal model, we want to get rid of the DC part of the amplifier and just be left over with the AC part. So first thing that we can do is short the voltage sources, the DC voltage sources, so that VCC is going to be connected then to ground. The next, the next thing that we can do is short any capacitor, so that capacitor gets a short that capacitor that gets a short. The third thing to do is to substitute the BJT AC model in for the, the schematic symbol here and then redraw the circuit as the small signal model. And here's a circuit redrawn as the small signal model. Here's my voltage source, there's my RS resistance, the output impedance of the voltage source, my base resistor now goes to ground over here, this is this is the collector which is connected straight to ground, and I have that voltage source. I'm sorry, the current source inside that, inside the collector. Over here at the emitter, I have the little R E value. This is the internal resistance between the base and the emitter, inside the transistor. Connected to the emitter of the amplifier, I have the external emitter resistance as well as the external load and my output voltage of course is across this external load. So now I've got the small signal model. The last step is to figure out what are the amplifier characteristics of the small signal model. So I need to figure out what is the voltage gain of the circuit, what is the input impedance, and what is the output impedance. So I'm first going to calculate the voltage gain and specifically the open circuit voltage gain. So what that's going to mean is the gain without the load resistor connected to it. So that's a, I'm going to just measure the output voltage just across this external res emitter resistor. So no load resistor connected right now. So disconnect that load resistor. And the definition for the open circuit voltage gain is going to be the output voltage without the load connected divided by the input voltage. Now let's take a look and see what are these outputs and input voltages. Well for the open circuit voltage the output voltage is really easy to see. It's simply the voltage across this RE value and with no load resistor connected that emitter current goes, all of it goes through this big RE value. So using Ohm's law the output voltage is going to be emitter current times the external emitter resistor. Now the input voltage, that's the voltage that's across this RB value. It's also the voltage that's across this current source there. It's also the voltage that's between this point and this point. And that's what we're going to use for calculating what the open circuit, well, the, what the input voltage is. So the voltage between that point and that point. Well, if we take a look at the what's happening in the circuit here, we have emitter current going through the little re, the internal resistance of the transistor, and also through the big re, the external resistance resistor that's connected to, to the emitter of the transistor. We have these two resistors in series, and it's the emitter current that goes through both of them. 
So the input voltage is going to be that emitter current times the internal resistance of the transit between the base and the emitter of that transistor plus the external RE value. We have an emitter current on the top and the bottom of this of this fraction of this ratio so those two currents cancel out and we get an open circuit voltage gain of RE divided by little re plus re. Now as long as this internal resistance of the tra in the transistor is small this is going to be close to 1. This open circuit voltage gain is going to be close to 1. If I want to calculate the overall voltage gain of the circuit with the load resistor connected the gain again is going to be V out over V in but this time the load is connected so my output voltage will be this IE current that gets split between RE and RL so it gets split and I can take the parallel combination of RE and parallel to RL to figure out what the equivalent resistance is going to be for the output voltage and then for the input voltage again it's going to be IE times this resistor plus this equivalent resistor so again it's this parallel combination of RE and RL and again I have IE on the numerator and the denominator so my closed loop voltage gain or my voltage gain with the load connected will be RE in parallel to RL divided by this little RE internal resistance plus RE in parallel to RL so because this parallel combination here is going to be somewhat smaller than the RE by itself, the actual voltage gain is going to be somewhat smaller than the open circuit voltage gain. The next thing to calculate is the input impedance. And that's the impedance seen from this point looking into the amplifier circuit. So that's going to consist of this RB value in parallel with whatever resistance is seen looking into the transistor which I'll call Z in Q. So Z in is going to be equal to the external resistor connected to the base in parallel with the, res the resistance seen looking into the transistor. And that resistance looking into the transistor is going to be determined by determined by figuring out what is the voltage across the resistor at this point divided by how much current goes into the resistor. So that's really just V in divided by I in. Well we've already figured out what uh, an equation for the input voltage is and it's the one that we just did for the for the calculating the voltage gain. So V in is I E times the internal emitter resistance plus the external emitter resistance in parallel with the load resistor. What is the current that goes into the transistor here? Well this is the, the base so that is simply the base current. Now using the relationship between the emitter current and the base current IE is equal to beta plus 1 times IB taking that number and substituting it into the equation here we get beta plus 1 times IB times this little RE plus those two externally connected resistors in parallel with each other all divided by IB. Well these base currents one on the numerator one on the denominator they cancel out and what we are left over with is an input impedance looking into the transistor of beta plus 1 times the little resistor inside the transistor plus RE in parallel with the load resistor and therefore the overall input impedance of this common emitter amplifier will be that 
externally connected base resistor in parallel with the resistance seen looking into the transistor which is beta plus one times RE plus big RE in parallel with RL. So the last thing that we want to figure out as far as the amplifier characteristics of the circuit go is the output impedance. And the output impedance will be the impedance seen from this point looking back into the circuit. And so hopefully you can see right away that's going to be this RE value in parallel with whatever seen looking back into the transistor here. So let's call that Z out Q, the impedance looking into the transistor there. Well now Z out Q, the output impedance of this transistor, that's um, the little RE value in series with whatever this stuff here is. So all of that, the resistance, the resistance of, of all of this stuff. So let's call that RE plus, well since it's on the base side of the transistor, let's call this Z out B. So Z out B. We are going to go back to the definition of, of figuring out output impedance to, to figure out what this is. That is going to be the voltage at this point divided by the current into this point, uh, into this point here. So the, the other thing that we need to do is open any current sources, so basically disconnect this and short any voltage sources. So we're going to short that voltage source right there. So really that's going to be, we're going to ignore this and then RS and RB are in parallel with each other to ground. So that Z out B, well the, the voltage at that particular point is the base voltage and the current into this point because remember we're looking from this side into the transistors so we're looking in this way so what is the current going into into this point here well that's going to be since we're on the emitter side that is the emitter current and the voltage here at the base is going to be well it's the base current times the parallel combination of RS and RB all divided by the emitter current that we had there. Well again we have we know what the relationship is between the base current and the emitter current so we can substitute in that beta plus one IB for the emitter current there and we get IB times this parallel combination of, of the RS and RB all divided by beta plus one times IB. Those base currents cancel out and we only we have RS parallel to RB divided by beta plus one. This parallel combination of RS and RB gets significantly reduced because of this beta plus one term. So putting all these things together, the overall output impedance is going to be the big RE value in parallel with little RE plus the resistance seen from the emitter looking into the base. So we now have a general equation for the three parameters for the amplifier, the common collector amplifier. We have the voltage gain equation, we have an input impedance equation, and we have an output impedance equation. And in general, these common collector amplifier circuits have a high input impedance, a low output impedance, a voltage gain that is about one, as well as an output signal that is in phase with the input signal. So I hope you learned a little bit about common collector amplifier AC analysis and I'll see you in the next video.